Hi, we're Jenny and Davis. Welcome to our wood shop. Today we're gonna to be talking about five tools that we no longer use in our woodworking business. As we're growing to build the next big furniture brand, we're realizing that there's a lot of tools that we were super excited to get when we were hobbyists that we just don't use anymore, which is sad because we spent quite a bit of money on those tools. A lot of money on those tools. <laughs> but we thought that'd be a really cool video just to show you guys some of the tools that we used to use a lot and now we don't really use anymore now that our business has grown. So stick around to see the five tools that we have ditched and see if you should ditch them as well. When we first started woodworking, we were moving around a lot. We were still in the military full time. I still remember the first thing I made. It was an absolutely terrible bed frame built out of two by fours with only a jigsaw and a drill. And I built it on the back concrete porch, if you can call it that, of our apartment. Over the years, after we moved a couple times, we started to amass a bunch of DIY homeowner and woodworking tools, much like a lot of you. And we were very proud of our collection of tools. I mean, we spent a lot of money on them. They took a long time to learn how to use, and we were building some really cool stuff with them. But now that we've answered the call to become entrepreneurs and, and build this business, we realize we've ditched a lot of those tools. And the first tool that we realized we never use anymore was actually our first tool. The jigsaw. This is an amazing tool. Jenny and I made so many projects with this little jigsaw. We even made an entire series of videos on how to build furniture with just a jigsaw and a cordless drill. That's what we started with. We never published those videos. It was a long time ago. Nobody wants to see them. <laughs> I used this jigsaw to build that bed frame that I kept stubbing my toe on. This jigsaw is kind of a crude tool. And a couple of years ago, it did save the day for us on a custom furniture build, but uh, the way that this blade oscillates and sort of how it cuts is just really rough. And so as we're trying to build luxury, fine furniture, this guy doesn't really have much use. If you know anything about jigsaws, you'll know that they're really good at being able to cut curves. And while we still need to cut curves on our charcuterie boards, it needs to be a little bit better of a cut. So we developed this charcuterie board handle sled, which we'll talk about when we get to another tool here in a minute. But this jigsaw will always have a special place in my heart, even if it doesn't have a place in our shop. Another tool we ditched, we don't even have in the shop anymore, but I'm sure some of you remember back in the day when we used to have a CNC. We had the large version of the Inventables X-Carve. It was the 1500 by 1500. And we were so excited when we got it because it was a brand new toy that we could play with and everybody all over the internet was talking about the Inventables CNC. We were just starting to make some pretty serious money with our business and we wanted to play with one too. Anyway, we have a whole series of videos on our adventures with the CNC, which I'll link up here and at the end of the video. But we found out that a laser engraver will do way better on the things we need than a CNC would do. Our business specializes in personalizing cutting and charcuterie boards. So the thing that we need most is a machine that will engrave people's names consistently and accurately and results in a similar look between every single board. You can do that with a CNC, but it's loud, hard to learn, and pretty complicated as far as the user experience goes. There's G-codes, there's feeds and speeds, and a whole bunch of other things that would take a really long time to teach another person how to do. And since we fly through hurricanes with the hurricane hunters in the summer, we have to be able to hire unskilled labor to personalize and ship all of our boards while we're gone flying. And the laser? is just hands down the better tool for that. It is honestly so easy, your grandma could do it. Lasers, as far as the user experience is concerned, are years ahead of a CNC. So until we're able to spend $20,000 on a big, nice CNC, we really just don't have a use for one in our shop. Stay tuned, because that day is coming very soon. And I know what you're thinking, $20,000 for a single tool is a ton of money. And managing finances in a business can be pretty overwhelming. 
That's why we're excited to share with you one tool that we have not ditched, a good business banking platform. North One is an online business banking platform that specializes in helping American small business owners take control of their cash flow. They're better than other bank accounts because they have on-call support and tailor-made tools that help your business last. You can open an FDIC insured account in under three minutes without having to step foot inside a bank. And after having spent hours sitting inside of a bank trying to do this, this is definitely the way to go. You can deposit checks, save money for taxes, and keep tabs on your cash flow all from the North One app. North One lets you automate everything from budgeting to bookkeeping. They have this really cool feature called North One Envelopes. You basically create custom rules of where to put your money after you deposit it. That way, every category has its own budget automatically. And you can even sync that to QuickBooks to even further automate it. North One's tools give you a clear review of your cash flow every single month. The envelopes feature can also help you save up for big tool purchases by just putting a little bit of money aside every time you deposit. Their higher ACH, wire, and check deposit limits mean that they can handle even your biggest jobs. And even after all that, they're still more affordable than traditional banks. On average, people save $180 a month with North One. They only charge a flat $10 a month fee. That's it, no hidden fees. That includes free ACH transfers, no overdraft fees, and free deposits at over 80,000 locations. Plus, you get access to over 2 million ATMs. If you want to try North One to easily manage all of your business finance needs, everyone who uses our link below will automatically get a $10 credit when they open and fund an account. Guys, North One is the real deal. If you're looking for an easier way to manage your business banking account, give them a shot. By supporting North One, you're supporting us. Thanks, North One. The next tool we never use anymore is covered in other tools that we do use. This oscillating belt slash spindle sander uh, was an amazing tool. I was so excited when we first got this. I remember I bought it without Jenny's explicit permission. I mean, I don't need my wife's permission to buy tools. We don't collaborate. She does what I say. When I finally got this tool, I used it so much. We used the belt to sand off rough edges. I used to use the edge of it here to make like really nice radius corners and just make my curves look buttery smooth after the rough jigsaw cuts. But kind of like the jigsaw, this tool is meant to smooth out things that are rough. We just don't have very many rough cuts that need to be smoothed out with this guy. So he really is just kind of there to look pretty. We still do use this guy from time to time, don't get me wrong, but it's maybe once every three months. Not every single day like I used to use it. This next tool kind of breaks my heart a little bit. These tools are loved by DIYers everywhere. We actually have three of them. Speed squares or roofing squares or I know they're a triangle, but they're called squares. We just don't use these anymore. They're so cool. They got this little lip and you can verify that something is 90 degrees, which is really helpful in cabinet making or if you're just trying to get two pieces to be uh, perpendicular to one another. There's all these angles here so you can like calculate the pitch of a, I mean, you can build the roof of a house with just this guy and a tape measure probably and obviously a saw, but you know what I mean. This tool is incredible, but we just don't use it. When we do need to check for square or calculate an angle, we're using something with a little bit more precision like this combination square or a really nice ruler. These are great for rough cutting construction grade lumber, but when it comes to like building really nice high quality cutting boards, uh, this again is just too rough of an approximation. We need something a little bit tighter. So we've ditched speed squares. And the last tool that we've ditched, I'm really kicking the anthill at this one. Hopefully not too many people are watching all the way to the end of this video, but we have all but ditched blue painter's tape. <gasps> There's a lot of really cool tricks that you can do with this stuff. Like this one. Let's say you want to temporarily stick two pieces of wood together so that you can make matching cuts. You're able to put some blue painter's tape down little bit of super glue, put your other piece of tape down like this, and then stick them both together. 
The super glue is gonna stick both pieces of tape together, which therefore sticks both pieces of wood together. But when you're done, you can easily just peel the tape off each piece of wood and go about your business. You can also use blue painter's tape as kind of a mask when you're doing laser engraving because there's a lot of smoke and all that sort of stuff going on in the bed of the laser. If you cover up the area you're gonna engrave with a few pieces of blue painter's tape and then the laser engraves on top of that, all of that smoke and that kind of black dark ring that goes around the object you're engraving falls on the painter's tape instead of your piece of art. So then when you peel the tape off, you're left with a nice, perfectly clean engraving with no smoke rings around it. So if this stuff is so stinking great, why are we ditching it? Just give me a sec to explain. We build these boards by the hundreds. And while all of these hacks and tips and tricks are really, really cool, they start to really stink when you have to do them a hundred times. That the CA glue and blue painter's tape method is really, really neat. If we did that every time we built one of these charcuterie boards, we'd be stuck here in the shop all night with the added labor that's involved in that. We had to find something way easier and way more repeatable, which is why we went to the guitar makers to see how they cut out really curvy shapes over and over and over again quickly. So that's how we came up with our charcuterie board handle jig right here. This allows us to get really nice curves on every single board and have them all be the same without having to peel off pieces of tape. And as for how we're eliminating it from our laser engraving process, we found out that just a little spray of alcohol with a, with a rag gets rid of that smoke ring even faster than picking off blue painter's tape every time we do an engraving. And especially when we get to really intricate types of engravings, like the, the floral wreath that we put around a lot of our initials on our cutting and charcuterie boards, Oh my goodness, it saved us so much time because picking out those itty bitty little pieces of blue tape from in between each leaf is so irritating and takes forever. Whereas now I just squirt it once with alcohol, wipe it away and we're done. The only little process that we have not ditched blue painter's tape for is finding the center on our boards. We'll throw down a piece of tape and draw over it with a sharpie just to let us know where the exact center of the board is. That way we can line up the engraving perfectly center on the board, but that requires so much less tape than all of these other processes used to require from us. So we just keep one tiny little roll next to all these boards. And if any of you have any better solutions than that, I, I, I would love to hear them because I'd love to ditch the painter's tape for this process too. It's just not every single board is the same size width or length. And, and, and so it's hard to find a tool that'll find the exact perfect center every single time for different size boards. But I would love to get rid of that manual process as well. Leave your comments down below. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. <laughs> When you start a business or you're building something incredibly complex, a truly skilled craftsman will know when to use which technique, even if the most applicable technique goes against popular opinion or what you would normally do in that situation. And that's what we found with running this business. As we're growing this business bigger and bigger, we're learning that we don't need to amass a huge plethora of tools to be successful. We just need a few that work well that we take really good care of. We need to specialize and get the correct tool to use for whatever procedure we're doing instead of depending on tricks or hacks or using tools in ways that they're not originally designed to be used. That means ditching tools that we love for their versatility in favor of something that does the job better. That's how we're gonna pass up the competition on our way to the top as we build Samara Table Company into the next big furniture brand. So let us know what tools have you phased out of your shop, even if you're still a hobbyist. We wanna know what have you traded out or upgraded to make your processes easier and faster. We would love to hear that story. And if you wanna be part of our story, hit subscribe and we will see you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the player, stick to the player. Ask me how I